Welcome back to The Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. We're looking at the first conversation right here, and it's the issue of the increase in uh, the fare, the airfares right now in Nigeria. Now, the jet A1 fuel price rose across the country following an 8.5% hike necessitated by spike in international oil prices. The aviation fuel price has been hiked for the third time in the month. Now, the price of Jet A1 aviation fuel has skyrocketed and has affected the ticket fare from 30,000 to at least 50,000 naira. The Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority has declared that the fare increase by the airline was in order since airfares had since been deregulated, which means airlines are at liberty to fix air prices, I mean, or fix airfares and not be fixed by the government. While stakeholders have attributed the increase in aviation fuel to the country's inability to have a functional local refinery that refines the product, high investment in logistics and high cost of aviation fuel handling equipment, among other issues. Meanwhile, the federal government has also said that it's not been informed of the hike in the airfares and it affected by airline operators. Joining the discussion this morning is Tangod Ogowan. He is an aviation expert and also a former vice president of aviation workers. Thank God it's good to join it's good to have you join us this morning. Yes, good morning. How are you? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Hello, good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. So let's start with the conversation okay. now. Uh, what do you make of the increase, the general increase? I mean, we're finding that, that the uh, airfares have been increased. Um, some people are saying 63%. But however, we're looking at 30,000 error, which used to be the regular price to about 50,000 error now for, um, you know, the air tickets. Um... Firstly, I want to thank you, uh, Plus TV, for this um, interview and interruption. Um, increasing the airfares from 30 to 50, uh, from, for, to 50 percent increase and not uh, 50,000 naira more. Firstly, we have encountered so much challenges on the COVID. Coming out from the COVID over this long period of years, with the challenges of travelers trying to wake up. If you watch on the sector of international, presently now we are already having a lot of restriction as a result of people trying to get back to their feet traveling. For um, every good aviation expert, it is not the right time. It is totally not a, a time that's acceptable. The government in any way will not... We... For us, I think it is a, a best time for the government to have a rethink on it, see to the need of where the people are already coming from. Tra traveling internationally, uh, even within the countries, are still picking up, and it's becoming a very hit of a big challenge. So I think it is something that um, needs to be revisited as soon as possible. And um, Nigerians as a whole, needs to uh, they, they need to see us in a, in, a, in a place where we are coming out of the challenges of this COVID and see the need to reverse it. So totally it is not um, acceptable and I don't think it is the right time. It's not the right timing. So I, I'm not, I, I don't think it's a good time for us as Nigerians. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Ogawa, so you, you are saying as an uh, aviation sector expert uh, that um, you, you think this is a wrong time for the airlines to increase domestic flight fares. I mean, we're hearing today from uh, the papers that have in the stories, for instance, uh, apart from, you know, uh, Green Africa Airways, other carriers, namely Air Peace, Arik Air, Asman Air, United Nigeria Airways, Max Air, Air Contractors and Dana Air have fixed their base economy class tickets for 50,000 naira on a one hour flight. And you are saying that this is not the right time to throw such a burden on Nigerians. Mercy talked about the, um, the fact that uh, this is not a regulated sector and the, uh, the fact that these airlines are free to fix their own prices. The federal government is saying they're not aware. Um, with the deregulated and liberalized sector like this, will there be anything the government can do 
to make these airlines have a more humane or economically feasible and acceptable base fare. Th Thangoro Gamo, are you there? Okay, uh, it, it's quite interesting. We'll try and get back uh, our guests on the line. Uh, but Mercy, um, you know, a lot of Nigerians, increased number of persons are flying. And um, it's been clear over the last year that the number of airlines in the country are not enough. The number of local airlines or planes are not enough to even cater to the number of people who are flying by air. Why are people flying by air in the country? I mean, it doesn't take you um, a long distance to fly or travel, rather, by road from, from Benin, <laughs> Benin City, okay, to travel by road from Benin City to, to Lagos. You know, once you just get from Benin, you get to Ore, Ore, you reach Lagos, you're done. It shouldn't take you so long to travel from Benin City to Port Harcourt. Okay, but people are not able, it shouldn't take you long to travel from Uyo to Calabar. It shouldn't take you long for, to travel from Port Harcourt to drive from Port Harcourt to Calabar. I mean, I've done Port Harcourt, Calabar, Calabar, Port Harcourt, Uyo, Calabar, Calabar, Uyo, the same day. You know, it shouldn't take you long to drive from, from Uyo or Port Harcourt to Lagos. You know, it shouldn't take you long to drive from Port Harcourt to Abba or Port Harcourt to Enugu. But it is a nightmare, a nightmare to drive from Port Harcourt to Abba, not to talk about to drive from Port Harcourt to Enugu. Port Harcourt to Abba used to be an hour less. You can just go and come. So people are, 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 are not driving for, for obvious reasons. But we have our guests back on the line. Um, uh, Mr. Thangoro Gawo, can you hear us, please? I can tell you split. Can you yeah. hear me now? Yes, yes. So uh, we're asking you, is there anything the government of, of Nigeria can do, bearing in mind the liberalized and uh, deregulated nature of the um, air transportation sector with its local airlines and what they are facing? Can the government do anything or waiting to ensure the prices, uh, the base fare for the economic class tickets are brought down? Um, thank you so much. I want to totally agree with you, Macy, and... Um Colleagues, I, I think the, the, the challenge I, I still want to say is that um, the government first should understand that when there is an increase in the fuel, it is going to affect the masses. The masses, like I said earlier, are still getting back their feet. Probably, I don't know, with the subsidy of the fuel, if that can be applicable to the aviation sectors of the airlines, because as it is, whatsoever economic situation we are facing right now, we need to also consider the state of what comes in as an income. Nigerians have not still come out from the COVID. Nigerians have not still come out from the crisis of how to meet their daily needs. If you watch over the past, air travels, like you also said, has also decreased. Today, we have a lot of people going on the roads than using the aircraft. And with the aircrafts having people being challenged with the issue of this COVID, are still struggling to go in. So increasing the airfare at this point will not make a difference for Nigerians to still make a whole lot of travel. Yes, it will still center on those who are just on a class. So I think that there can be a subsidy from the government that Nigerians are going to be the one that this will be fully impacted on. I made a reference to the international sector. As I speak to you presently, there have been a struggle of the coming alive of the international sector. And most of these international sector flights are also connected with the local flights, which in one way or the other, maybe people from other eastern zones who need to meet up with the international flights here. We are having a whole lot with the COVID, with the restriction, with various days tests, as I speak to you, many of the international flights have not been restricted, have not yet been removed. The restrictions are still high on them. For those vaccinated, even those not vaccinated, as I speak to you, those things are already pending. So I think it would be nice for the government to see aviation sector as a very important sector to also reduce the heat. Let's no, but, 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 but internationally what? and not locally. Locally, no. It's going to give us more hot hitness in addition to the challenges we are facing internationally presently. No, I but, but, but let's, I mean, let's come to the reality. And, and that's where, you know, the, the, the crux of this conversation is around. 
Uh, it's also, I mean, it's been already stated that market forces would be determining air tickets. And that's what it is because it's been deregulized. We're talking about the fact that, I mean, airlines have the right to fix the prices because it's not been subsidized. We already know the argument and what we're grappling with. I mean, looking at the fact that uh, for 2022, the government is saying, yes, we're going to be subsidized. And we're looking at 2.6 trillion naira, and we don't have what it takes. The Nigerian government does not have uh, the resources to actually even pay for this subsidy. We will be dependent on borrowing. And so saying that the government should consider subsidizing uh, <laughs> The FS might just be another disaster. I mean, some people say this is totally unfair. Yeah, but if there's no subsidy, let's look at our economic situation. Do we have what it takes as Nigerians to be able to cut up for, 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 for the rich and the, and, and the high class? We're already part with a system where the economic system is getting challenging already. I feel that it is very, very important for a balanced system to be seen at this critical point of the nation. If we have a balanced system, where we can be able to manage the state of the nation in addition to the people having a free... Okay, let's go to... Uh, let's, let's look at what happens at the international... Hello, Mr. Gao, are you there, please? Okay, we seem to be having a, a slight challenge with the network. But Mr. Gao, if you can hear us... Okay, we'll, we'll try and reconnect with him. Mercy. Um, he did say that the... the uh, uh, what do you call it again? The... Uh, the number of persons going by road now has increased. I do not know if that is the case. Um, you know, he's an ex expert, so no, I, mean, that's uh, I, I would like to ask him some questions because, I mean, I, we all fly by air, and we see how the, the sometimes the flights are sold out, you know, um, and uh, people even, you know, complain of the fact that they, they don't want to fly by go by road anymore because of the insecurity. Um, you look at parts of the southeast, for instance. Um, you look at parts of the middle belt, the north, you know, you look at Abuja, Kaduna, you know, you look, if, you, if, if persons have the opportunity to pay 20,000, 20, 30,000, 28, 23, 25,000 uh, uh, on uh, a cheap local flight, I, I, I know the cheap ones, because <laughs> we, we have to go through and do some research. There's some new ones that are really cheap. You know, people will prefer to do that, because flying, going by road is, is a nightmare. The roads are bad in the country. Um, it's a shame. Uh, insecurity as well. Uh, the police have, police have largely deserted the roads compared to before you know the um the unknown gunmen came uh, also i think after NSAS they came back but with these attacks on policemen especially in the southeastern parts of the south south you have a reduction in number of policemen on the roads even in Lagos state you have a reduction in number of policemen on the roads after attacks on police officers you know so this does not allow um give people confidence to move. Um, I, know of, I know that some of people who traveled over the weekend uh, within Rivers, um, uh, Anambra, and um, uh, uh, Onicha, you know, Delta, Saba Axis, who, who said simply they didn't see policemen on the roads. What do you see if you travel by road within the southeastern part of Nigeria and some parts of the south-south will be more vigilante groups, not policemen. These are community youth, okay, local boys who are holding weapons. And these guys demand ransom and taxes from the drivers. So you have a situation where a driver says, I'm not going to pay you money. What do you do? They'll cock their gun. I have it on record or account, rather, of someone who traveled within Anambra and Delta State, you know, uh, and River State. So that's straight, that's echo, okay, of meeting several, several um, situations where, uh, a number of situations, sorry, where the driver refused to pay these community vigilante uh, groups money and they cocked their guns. So it's almost become a, I'm sorry to say, wild, wild west situation in the southeast. Someone sent me a message and said, Kofi, you know what? I saw a human heart ripped out on the road somewhere in the southeast. You know, human heart ripped out. It was on the road somewhere. So I'm not making this up. Um, so the, the age of the unknown gunman has meant that, you know, some places wouldn't have police presence. Uh, it's, it's become less safe to travel in the southeast. Um, you have cases where you have kidnapping, especially on the border between uh, Abia State and Anambra State. It's become a kidnapping uh, uh, a situation because of the, the bad spot on the road. So, you know, these are the dangers people face in traveling. And if they have their way, they'd rather go by air. No, so, I, 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 lastly, lastly, Messi, sorry, before you come in, I would also look at, you know, for instance, you're going home to Calabar. 
we all know the situation. Right now, the company is advertising, you know, tra traveling by water from Calabar to Uyo, which is just about two hours or less by road, simply because the road is bad. You know, so if you're to go from Lagos or Potaka to Calabar, would you want to go by road? The answer is no. If you can afford to pay 25,000 naira, if you pay ahead of 30,000 naira, you'd prefer that so that you don't have to go through the, um, the stress of that bad road and, you know, yeah, what you face. So, so I, I think that, you know, with the argument of, um, yeah, let's look at the transport sector. We have, you know, the airways, you have the, uh, the road, uh, of course you have the road, and then of course you have the waterways. Uh, transport system. Although a lot of arguments been put out that we haven't been able to be very sufficient. I mean, develop these different uh, means of transportation or ways of transportation. Let's see how effective is you know the waterways. How safe is the waterways? As much as some people, for instance, like you have mentioned, uh, because of the Calabai tour, that's really horrible, very horrible. And that's a trunk A road. <laughs> that's a federal government road. And uh, we know in 2015 how pictures were put out of work that's ongoing on that road. That's like this question for another day and you want to ask yourself so if we if we have actually developed you know the transport system or our road infrastructure properly the airways i mean you have road infrastructure you have the airways uh, you have the seaways and everything is sufficient this different um you know means or ways of transportation are very sufficient then we won't have a problem because we would always have a society where you have the haves and haves not and you can't have that society where there's equality so not, not everyone can travel so, by air yeah so whether or not there will be security or no security concerns we also need to understand that some people will not be able to afford to travel by air you also have some people who can afford to travel by air well, whether security concerns we, we are not so have our guests I don't, back okay so line, we have yeah. a guest yeah. but shortly let me let us just um, are you there sir Thank you so much. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, um, you, were, you were responding to a question uh, Messi asked you before we lost we lost the signal. So can you com conclude on that? Then we ask you some further questions, sir. Okay. I think um, if I can remember, he's talking about when I was talking about um, the number of people who are traveling on the road, and um, compared to the number of people who are traveling on the air. Mm. If you watch over the period of years, um, most people are still picking it up. No, no. So, so. So what, what yeah, we're saying ahead. is this. So what we're saying is this. You are of the opinion that government should um, subsidize because the okay. you know you already have. I mean, it's already stated that the market forces would determine the airfare um, prices, and that's what it is because it is it's been deregulated. And so the question now is because you're asking that the government needs to come in and subsidize, and the question is. Should the government, can we afford, you know, subsidizing uh, uh, the aviation sector and just so that we can have government fixing the price, right? Have a regulated price from the government. Can we afford that? Because we're still grappling with the issue of subsidy. I mean, let's not even, let's, you know, bring it to 2022. We're looking at 2.6 trillion naira. The Nigerian government cannot afford that. They would have to borrow this 206 trillion naira, you know, to subsidize petrol. So um, do you think that it's wise for us to be asking that the federal government, um, you know, come in and subsidize the aviation sector or the airfares? Thank you so much, Mercy. I still want to refer back to the challenge we are faced with presently. If a, an economy situation of a particular country is very comfortable and okay, I don't think we'll be having so much of those challenges as it is in the international world. Most of you have traveled out, will have seen that the uh, transport system internationally is already on a standard way. It's standard. We don't even need a lot of people have to fly on the air, and even if they have to fly on the air, I am very convinced of what those rates are to travel within international countries. I've had time at least to visit most of these international countries and I've been there for several times. You find out that their train stations are working perfectly. Their road stations, they are safe on the road. Nobody's thinking of being kidnapped. I, I'm just saying of some recent times that someone who wants to go just to nearby places here are being kidnapped. So if you have a safe sector, and the system is safe, and the economy system is safe, one can be comfortable to say, fine, whatever it is, the people, their salary will be able to equate for it. What is the minimum wage in Nigeria? If a minimum wage is less than the rate of a flight, what they're trying to say is that the common Nigerian cannot use the aircraft. So for a very clear and a, a better system of the running of an administration, 
it is important for a government to look for a way for the sake of the little masses. Subsidy, uh, subsidy of this, yes, it's going to be a very hit on the nation. Then there should be a room where job opportunities are created, minimum wages are increased, to be able to meet to that expectations that needs to be done in the country. So when we don't have that expectation, what then do we want to, to, to go back to the masses? And the masses will be left to suffer. So I think I, I, I strongly believe that the government has a solution for this. A growing government, of course, will have a way out where both the people that are the poor cadre and the senior cadre will have a balanced system. Or increase the road system, save our roads, work on the, uh, um, the air railways, and let there be a, an alternative. But as it starts today, the air seems to be the only alternatives for people to travel without being kidnapped. So if we don't have a road system where you can travel peacefully, there must be a way out. So increasing the rate at this point, are you de 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 denying the people from traveling? Because with that rate of 28, 30, people are still struggling. As I speak to you today, if you make a booking traveling tomorrow or next, the first can go as much as 70,000, 69,000. That is how bad it is. Those who travel during the first period can yes, say the same thing. Yes, absolutely. So let us be sincere. Mm. We don't have a balanced system. We don't have a system where people can say, let me go with the road, and you are comfortable with it. How many of you can travel on the road? Okay. Next, I'm sure you can't travel from here on the road. M Mr. So I'm Mr. So go. To that. No, I, I stopped a long road. time ago. Yeah, Mr. So go. interesting, <laughs> I, I interesting that you... I more than, more than 10 years. Yeah, Mr. So go. interesting that you said you've not traveled by road for more than 10 years, but also interesting that you you said that, you know, at the um, in the festive period, uh, I think December and New Year, January, Nigerians are paying us. Some paid as much as um, 80,000, 90,000 hours to... To, to, to fly. I mean, I, I personally had to fork out uh, almost that amount of money for a, a flight ticket because there was no, basically not an option to travel by road in these circumstances. Um, as to the reason why the, the A1 fuel has gone up in price uh, from about um, uh, 400 naira per litre uh, to 420 naira per litre, 450 naira per litre in some uh, uh, petrol uh, airports in Nigeria in 10 days, Mr. Ogao. Um, it's been adduced to, of course, the, 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 the exchange rate between the Naira and the dollar. Uh, this is what one airline said. I won't mention the name of the airline. Um, they said that the least ticket we sold a year ago was 23,000 Naira. Last a year ago, just 12 months, when aviation fuel was 190 Naira. The official rate was 340 Naira to the dollar. But today, if Forex is available, and that's a big if. If forex is available, uh, it is 450 naira to the uh, naira to the dollar. And when it is not available, the alternative uh, market or the parallel market sells as 570 naira to the dollar. So it's obviously an economic issue. And um, um, what can be done to solve this this situation? Should we just uh, uh, forget about it and just take it in good faith, or can something be done to solve this situation um, with? the airlines complaining of the forex rate and the increase of course the you know uh, ripple effect on the the price of a1 fuel per liter one of the uh, one of the biggest challenges we have had is a, is a case where both the aviation sector i will want to say over the years the aviation sector have been one of the the most affected in this country and in the world and it is still affecting us because when it comes to the dollar increase it becomes a general challenge for everyone in every unit in the aviation sector. Now, the airlines will want to meet their day-to-day -day activities to enable them to be able to apply safety and apply everything they would need in the process of embarking of clients. When they are not okay, it is obvious that they cannot be able to take the flight because they also have to apply all the safety rules. To fly an aircraft, it costs so much. I use the word so much. And they pay so much in fleeing an aircraft. I have fleeing an aircraft where I know that we are not even up to 20 in an aircraft. It has, it has become a total loss. And I knew how most international flights have to run during the period of the COVID once run empty because of the situation too. So it is not a, a, a case that can be handled or one will say, okay, let them don't travel or fly. But the challenge remains that it is something we have come to live with. But until we have a good economy where the dollar rate can be able to be okay, if the system is a run system, it's going to be affecting generally. 
is affecting in every sector. As long as dollar has increased, the cost of each of those flights, tickets, by the exchange rate will be also be affected. So it is, it is going to be a thing that until the economy situation improves, we will still be battling with it. I don't see that something that's going to be something now. It now becomes on who has the money, who have to fly. But okay, um, and just to add up to... Just to add to what Kofi had mentioned, apart from the cost, because uh, this increase uh, in the airfares are attributed to the fact that the cost of the aviation fuel is under high, and so the, you have the exchange rate also affecting that. Another issue that some experts and stakeholders have mentioned or made reference to is also the fact that we the inability of our local refineries, you know, to refine uh, this product. But on the other hand, some people have argued that even though even if we have a functional refinery, I mean, refineries that can refine products and uh, we have ability to produce, we're not just going to have cheap fuel or cheap petrol and not to talk about, you know, aviation fuel being available. So it doesn't necessarily change anything. I'd like to share your thoughts on this one as well. Our inability to refine our products. And uh, even if that happens, does it mean that we can have aviation fuel available? The cost would drop. Does it change anything? Um... I, I, I still remain on, if we look inward and begin to refine all our refineries, the possibilities of when the fuels are not being, we have an advantage. You no, know, there's what they call the local advantage uh, opportunities. Once there is an advantage of home that we can have our refineries producing this fuel, yes, it can make a great change. I strongly believe that. Once you are in control, once you have that in your course study, definitely there's going to be an improvement in the country. I, I strongly believe that part. Yes, mm. it's going to make a change. Mm. Interesting. Um, um, you, 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 you rightly said, uh, Mr. Ogao, that the airlines um, uh, go through a lot, you know, to operate. Um, and, uh, you know, you gave us a sense of, of, of how difficult it is to fly one aircraft. Um, um, you know, you talked about the impact of COVID on Nigerians. Uh, economically, and that this is not the right time to to introduce such a, an increase. Um, but let's let's get back to that point, which I think you you touched on it a little bit, which I think is important as well. That these airlines are basically just scraping by. A lot of Nigerians don't know that these airlines are scraping by. Do you agree with that that school of thought? Because I have spoken to one or two industry experts before on flights, and they would say the airlines are just scraping by. They're not really making a huge profit like people think, um, and they are really struggling. That's why it's difficult for some airlines to stay in business. Um, so looking at all these, and they also suffered effects of COVID-19 as well, with um, reduction or if a cancellation of flights and the airports were shut down, they had to keep paying their staff and all that, and business was bad for them. Um, so, so, I mean, should we be more understanding of the, the airlines with the difficulties they faced, very hard hit industry in COVID-19, and of course, the, 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 the difficulty in operating such a business in Nigeria today. Should we be more understanding of it? Yeah, Mr. Kovi, like I said, I've worked in the aviation industry for an international flight for over 15 years. I was also in the war front of the aviation, and I, 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 I with, with the whole of the experience I've had, in the last two years, the aviation sector was late dealt with. I am, I am still wondering the opportunity that the airlines have and how long they're going to start paying back a whole lot they are all owing. If I have not made refunds on tickets, with my expert and with being an, uh, in charge of an aviation sector, also at a, a travel home where I'm also overseeing, I had so many clients that have to make refunds of tickets from 2020. And most of those, all of those tickets were reported full by the airline. Airlines refunded full money back to clients, and most of those tickets. Um, it, it seems we have a, another a network freeze with Mr. Ogawa. I think um, if we can reconnect. Uh, Mr. Yeah, Mr. Ogawa, go on, please. Go on, if you can hear us. Airlines, we are still paying staffs in the midst of the difficulties. Most of these airlines are yet to return back. I remembered most of the international airlines where I, I, I worked with, they had to loan money from home countries to survive. Most of these airlines we are talking about, for instance, 
you are all aware that Emirates has not moved until recent time. They have spent over years, and they, those staffs are still there. They are being paid, and the Nigerians vote majority. So what I'm going to say is that the airlines industry, they have to pay their landing permits, they have to buy their aviation fares, they have to pay even in those areas different incomes, they have, they have to make different payments of expenses. In the last two years, I can categorically say that no airline will be able to say that they're on their feet as I speak now. Financially, airlines are cut, counting lost. And if they were able, if they'll be able to succeed in the next years to come, it is when the time comes we'll know. Because even Nigerians are still finding it difficult to travel. Don't forget, COVID has taken us to the new normal. We're no more like in the usual days when you want to go out for meetings. I have to cancel so many bookings of people who wants to travel because they can no longer meet up as usual. It has to be a Zoom meeting. It has to be various meetings on call. People don't travel the way it has to be. If you need to travel within Africa, I know how much you have to pay for a copy test still. And if you come into Nigeria, you have to still pay for a copy test still. There is a whole lot of challenges that people are beginning to manage travel. So the COVID has been dealt with the aviation sector. And the aviation sector does not need that implement now. Rather, what we need is a gradual process to rise. It's not like a man who has fallen over two years. You want to rise him up, and you are using a hard strength on him. The man will have to go down again. If we don't manage the sector very well, the clients are the determination factor of the success of every aviation sector of the airlines. So if the clients can no longer travel as a lot of increment in the first, that is going to totally bring down the aviation sector to the past. At this time, the government does not need that. At this time, the aviation needs to gradually pick up to see how they can meet up. There are promos. Airlines are looking for promos. Airlines are looking for people to pay people to travel. People are still not traveling. I know what I'm talking about. I know how many tickets have been put on hold up to yesterday out of the year of 2020. So people are not traveling. So it's not the best time for an increment of fares. And even if it has to be, not now. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Mr. Gao is um, an expert and expert in the aviation sector, also former leader of aviation sector workers. Thank you, Gao. Thank you very much for giving us your uh, expert analysis on the situation with Nigeria's uh, aviation sector. All right. Uh, moving on, um, uh, Messi, it's, 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 it's really unfortunate and really sad. Um, and if you talk to uh, industry experts, they, they, it's simple to them. It's a very simple matter. You know, in a time when the economy is going through a lot, at the time when the Naira is struggling against the U.S. dollar, uh, and, um, you know, the CBM policies have not worked. It's, it's almost become like a Tom and Jerry. They're trying to do everything to catch up with the dollar. It's not working. You know, even they blame the bookie effects and shut down. The side has been shut down. Still, it's not working, you know. And we're hearing that the the central bank is saying they're not going to be giving debt deposit money banks uh, a hard currency or, or you know forex, you know. Uh, so so these are some of the things that people are, are talking about. Where do these airlines, you know, get the money, the foreign exchange, you know, at least on the official rates to be able to access this foreign exchange to now get to to pay for the the fuel. If they saying that sometimes they don't have the official you know forex available and they have to resort to the parallel market which will be higher um they have to transfer this burden to someone i repeat it's a very very tough business being an aviation uh, a company in nigeria or being an airline in this country it's not as lucrative as some people think i, I don't it's even, tough so uh, as much it's as tough. yes we're talking about the aviation sector beginning from where you actually landed saying it's difficult to be in the aviation sector. I mean, running business. It, because it's difficult to run an airline. It's, I mean, it's, running it's, an it's airline, he said that they're yes. going through a lot. And you would, not Even before now. Before you would not now. necessarily actually blame them for all that's going on. Yeah. But I just think that generally, even being a business owner in Nigeria is such a lot of work. I mean, it's yes. so difficult. Yes. And so there's a lot of respect for everyone who runs and owns a yes. business in Nigeria. Because usually we expect that government would provide an enabling environment. This is what government, I mean, it's just simple economics. It's no rocket science that government should provide an enabling environment where you have the private sector thrive. And then you have these people. Now, number one, top on the list is security. There's no way you're going to do business, including if you look at you know, the country right now, you want to talk about how many persons are investing, local and foreign investors. No one wants to you know, invest monies in a, you know, 
in a country where there's a lot of threat. You, there are other factors that actually hamper and makes it so difficult for businesses to actually thrive. You know how many businesses have actually folded up. We, recently, we're talking about the diesel. I mean, you remember the cost you did this morning. Yes, I think yes, I saw it. Yes, but, 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 but talking about an enabling environment, um, for, for, the, for the aviation sector, it's more about, um, uh, in this instance, you know, why, why are we as a country... Um, still importing fuel. So, so and, and you look at, at several sectors of the economy are tied to this thing called the price of petrol because that is how the economy runs. And um, since we don't have power supply, you know, and um, till now, we all have to rely on generators uh, generating our own electricity, you know. And, and, and we have to, see businesses have to now get fuel to run. So, so th th that's one difficulty. The, the, the movement of people and goods from place to place, especially goods like food, for instance, it has to be done with cars. Cars run on fuel. That's true. And now the airlines too, they run on fuel. So the question that, that some people are asking is, why is Nigeria till this day with its stupendous and abundant natural gas and natural crude oil resources still importing fuel. This surely has to be economic sabotage. I mean, it's hard to convince... So, so I think it's, it's, we're, no, saying, we're saying... Sorry, Messi, it's, it's hard to... It's hard to... I'm just trying to learn. It's hard to understand and to convince anyone as to why why Nigeria is still importing fuel to today. And that is my problem. That's why I use the word economic sabotage. And, and, and the people of the country need to ask a question. Why is the country still importing fuel today? after 16 years of democracy since 99. Well, that's the much uh, we can actually take at this point in time. We do appreciate you for being part of the breakfast. Uh, we'll definitely return tomorrow. It promises to be a great time. 7 to 9 o'clock will be the time. Uh, in, in case you missed out of any part of the conversation, it's all right to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We're at Plus TV Africa on uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And do subscribe to the YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Boko. Have a fantastic Tuesday. And I'm Kofi Bartels. Thanks for joining us. Good morning.